Part 5 of Principality of Self-Bitterness Pride shows itself when a person finds a way to exalt himself or herself. That is false and unrighteous pride. It is self-centeredness and the wrong kind of self-love, rooted as it is in making oneself seem greater than others. Self-effacement happens when a person purposes to hide in the background, minimizing their actions. They deliberately choose to exhibit modest, retiring behavior. This is often the wallflower in the group. True humility can, of course, be good, but not when it results from an unloving spirit showing itself in deliberate behavior. This is the kind of behavior that refuses to accept thanks for a job well done, preferring to almost back out of the room to avoid it. It comes from false piety. These are some of the forms of pride. We have chosen to call pride a form of self-hatred because of the disastrous fruit it bears in a person's life. Another piece of the armor of an unloving spirit is I and the I will. An antichrist spirit will always protect, develop, and look to itself first. It seems it sees the world in a sphere that surrounds itself. But a spirit that's not of antichrist will look beyond itself to the bigger picture. Learning to be free from an unloving spirit requires looking beyond ourselves and really seeing others. It gives us the ability to look at those who have rejected or victimized us and realize they have serious problems of their own. It is the ability to separate the sin from the sinner and gives us the ability to forgive and have compassion on them. We have to be able to look deep into our own nature and discern what we really are from what we are not. If we can see our true godly nature, then we will not act ungodly. Satan will be left without a foothold. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11 verse 1 what do you hope for? A different way of thinking? A different nature? A different way of live, living? We will never have a different way of thinking if we haven't changed our hearts. It's not possible. Why? Because the Bible says so. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7 Referring to Satan, Isaiah 14 verse 13 says, For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Here we see the operation of I will. Satan said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. In verse 14 he continues, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I will, I will. It is critical to understand the nature of Satan is that of self or self exaltation, pride, I will. An unloving spirit always seeks to exalt itself. I, I will. These form, this, these form the crux of our problem in creation. The Bible says in both Genesis and Jude that there are angels reserved in chains of darkness awaiting judgment because they left their proper state of habitation. 
How did this happen? They freely chose to sin. This is a truth about all created beings, from archangels to people. God gave us all a free will. God gave us the ability to make quality decisions. None of us were created as a puppet or clone or to simply vegetate. All of us have been given the ability to reason out a matter and come to a conclusion. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Every created being has free choice. Joshua 24 verse 15 says to choose this day whom we are to serve. Did Jesus have a choice? He said, Abba Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. <clears throat> Mark 14.36 Why do you and I serve God? Because we choose to do so. Because of a free will. Every created being has the potential to be a Lucifer. That's why the human race is, in, is on probation. God continues to test our hearts. Why? We were created to be kings and priests in God's kingdom. Before appointing us, God wants to know <clears throat> if we are just another Lucifer or one of his fallen angels. Are you trustworthy? In his sovereignty, God already knows who will, choo who will choose to be faithful. But the question for us is, do we know? This is a powerful thought. We must have confidence that he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. 1 John 4 verse 4 do we have the confidence that we can overcome Satan and be found worthy of being a king or priest in God's kingdom? Lucifer tempted the other angels with self-exaltation, promising them power, supremacy, and rulership. We need to answer the question, what does Satan use to tempt us? One-third of the angels followed his lead, indicating his temptation is powerful. Many Christians work to establish their own kingdoms within church bodies, and they do so on their own terms rather than God's. As they strive for power, they mask their motives with an air of pride and superiority. Well, I'm the only one who really knows how to do this. Their real motive is spiritual pride and arrogance. How can we observe the real motives of a leader? David's life gives us the key. When Nathan confronted him with his sons, he tore his robes and lay before God, begging forgiveness. Psalm 51 powerfully tells us the story because David repented. He was called a man after God's own heart. Acts 13 verse 22 The key was repentance, in humility going before God, acknowledging his sin, asking for forgiveness, and turning away from evil. Lucifer never repented, and never, neither did the fallen angels, his demons. They remain arrogant, and jealous of God today. Making the right choice today sets us apart in both his life and for eternity. Choos choosing to live humbly and with the contrite heart while taking responsibility for the time we fall short of God's will. Sets us apart from the sons of the devil as sons of God. 
Choosing what is right separates the sons of light from the sons of darkness. Why was David called a man after God's own heart? Two reasons. He loved God, and he took responsibility for his sin. Then he sought and received God's forgiveness. God's desire is that we do the same thing. And I'll stop there and continue on with part six.